Justin Bakula here with the Hurdy Gurdy Travel Podcast. Once again, responding to a Dave Ramsey video. I get people in the comments saying, Dave Ramsey has great advice. He's just speaking to an audience in debt. The advice isn't for you. He's still on point about what he says, but we'll see here that he has no idea what he's talking about when it comes to points and miles, when it comes to credit cards, a lot of his all or nothing blanket statements and just outright falsehoods here. He takes a caller from someone, I believe, named Kathy, who says, hey, I use credit cards for work expenses. My work reimburses me. So what's the problem, Dave? I'm just paying it off. What's the issue with this? So Dave, as usual, is going to talk about all credit cards bad and not understand using credit to your advantage. So let's get to it here. Kathy's over in Austin, Texas. Hi, Kathy. How are you? Great. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. What's up? So I've heard you all advise against using credit cards in favor <laughs> of debit cards or cash. Mm -hmm. So my question is, why shouldn't my husband and I take advantage of getting credit card points for travel expenses? Yep. So Kathy's saying here that she's traveling for work purposes. Her employer is going to reimburse her. So why should she not use her personal credit cards or business credit cards? and just get reimbursed. So you're charging maybe a thousand, two thousand to your credit card rather than your employer just booking it and you're racking up the spend, you're racking up the points. Even if you're just getting something like 2% cash back or 2x points, why not take what seems to be very free money or even better yet, and of course Dave Ramsey won't get into this, is that you can use a new card working on a signup bonus. So if you get a new card like the Chase Sapphire Preferred you're getting 60,000 bonus points with 4,000 spend as the current offer in November of 2023. And if you can rack up $4,000 of reimbursed travel and just pick up 60,000 points, which are worth at least $600 if you cash them out, that's a tremendous victory. You're floating funds for just a little bit and you're getting reimbursed. So let's hear why Dave is going to say that this plan is, as the laptop sticker says, debt is still dumb. He's going to classify this as going into debt, of course. Uh, let's, that are uh, required for work, but are going to be reimbursed by the employer. So your employer is so poor they require you to advance them for your own travel? <laughs> so, so this is the assumption. Dave is already assuming, oh, your employer is poor and that you need to put up the money for travel. Why can't your employer put up the money? <laughs> so it's already uh, with a silly assumption here that the employer is poor, although the employer is going to reimburse for travel. This this already is off to a bad start with Dave. No, sir. <laughs> the caller is even laughing at Dave. I, I have a hard time keeping serious with these response videos. Well, why do they require you to advance them for their own for your own travel? The co-host here, <laughs> like, what's what's so funny? Is she laughing at Dave? She should be laughing at Dave. You're traveling on behalf of an employer and they're not paying for it in advance? Why are they making you no. pay for it for them? Yeah, actually, if you gave me a choice, if I were still working, I'm not. You gave me a choice, hey, Justin, we have this upcoming trip, so you can use your credit card and pay for a hotel, pay for gas, pay for all these expenses, and we'll reimburse you. Or we could just do it. I'm going to take the employer reimbursement all the time, rack up the spend, get the points, miles, it's great. I, when I did work, I would get reimbursed for some transportation expenses. So I'd be able to log mileage and I'd get reimbursed. So I would be fronting gas money and actually I would use points very often for gas and just outright get paid rather than them giving me some sort of gas gift cards. I'll use my credit card all the time and get reimbursed if I can. That's great. Well, that's, that's the uh, established protocol. Yep. Typically it's how it works. Yeah. Okay. Why? I don't. I, I'd prefer that to happen. I mean, you, you got people out here in the streets buying prepaid cards, converting their prepaid cards to money orders, using reloadable cards, using all of these a little bit advanced, a little bit complicated, I must say, methods to convert credit into cash. But here's a situation where your employer is saying, hey, we're just going to give you the money back so you can charge to your card. And then Dave is sitting here, oh, your employer is poor. Oh, why do this? Oh, no, we haven't asked them. Yeah. So I mean, gonna... you understand that if they decide not to pay you one month, that those are your credit cards. <laughs> the, the employer is just going to decide not to pay you. So what, what is the likelihood of that? 
when you're in an established business, you're with an established employer, you've been working with them, do you, do you think they're just going to jet? Do you think, oh, no, sorry, we're just not going to pay you for this trip, even though we agreed to pay you? Is that even likely? Like, what what is the likelihood of that? That they're just going to go broke, they're going to go busto, or they're just going to renege on, on it? Is that, like, less than 1%, less than a tenth of a percent? Like, what is that? Is is that even a high risk? If we're going to play that game like, oh, well, you, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't make decisions because there's a little bit of risk involved, it's like, okay, well... Don't plug in a toaster, you might get electrocuted. Don't drive because you might get in an accident. Don't fly a plane because the plane might crash. Like how how are how deep are we going to go into this, Steve? This is true. And you understand that I'm the guy that's been counseling and coaching people for thirty five years. So I'm the guy that had the guy walk in with eleven thousand dollars on his Amex that was supposed to be reimbursed. On his Amex. He doesn't even mention the name of the card. So I'm not even sure if this story is, is real. He, he's saying, oh, I've been counseling and coaching people not to use credit, but then this guy is using credit anyway, and he's still working with you. I, I'm not sure about that. But even if we're, even if we're to take it as, as truth, okay, so the guy charged $11,000 to his card, and then his business closed the next day. Like, what was, the, what was the real risk that that was going to happen? And if that did happen, can you just call in and say, hey, I had all this work reimbursed travel, but then my employer just suddenly padlocked the door and just decided to jet. So you can always charge back things. You can always call in and talk about, okay, this this was supposed to be reimbursed and it wasn't, or I made this order with this merchant and I never received the product. You know, I, I've gone through some of these processes before. They're not so pretty, but if it's going to be $11,000, yeah, I'm going to make a phone call, Dave, and you're probably not going to get those protections on debit cards, by the way burst but when he went to the office that day there was a padlock on the door and they'd filed chapter 11 <laughs> he had eleven thousand dollars on his amex amex didn't care if his company had gone broke they wanted their money yeah i don't know about that you could always dispute transactions but again like what was the likelihood of that actually happening and can you really go into your office and say hey could you guys just front this to me and they're going to say oh well that's not the policy so you're just going to have to front it yourself. And like, where are you going to go with that? Like, can you really negotiate your way out of that? So what, what what's Dave's alternative? Just quit the employer, don't take the travel, or just put it on a debit card. And then if you put it on a debit card, then it's just going to be the same result anyway. And you're still going to be stuck for 11000 And it's probably going to be a worse situation. So yeah, let's put it on credit. Let's use the lines of credit and leverage that. Get the points. Take the time to pay it back. Why not? understandable mm. Mm. so because I, I pull up this super rare example of oh one guy didn't get reimbursed and there was a padlock on the door the next day so nobody should ever use credit nobody should ever have reimbursed travel on their credit cards of all the people that get reimbursed travel how many businesses close the door the next day or the next week and put a padlock on and then the businesses just go rogue and you don't pay back like could could we see a chart of that dave or are you just going to bring up this anecdotal experience and think because this one thing happened that nobody should take any risk whatsoever of putting charges on a credit card because you might not be able to pay it back because the employer decided to close like a week later a problem isn't it <laughs> For it's a problem absolutely for well, you too. why are you different yeah so the call the caller is making a good point okay yeah for him it's a problem but i don't think it is a problem for me because i've worked for this business the business has been fine i don't anticipate a padlock being on the door like the last company i worked with was a mental health service provider and they have lots of demand lots of clients lots of locations for them to just say all right well we're closing every location tomorrow and everybody that we told we were going to give back uh, travel reimbursement or trip reimbursement uh, we're just not doing that, guys. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's likely at all. And they're still open, by the way, Dave. Different. Well, we haven't we haven't experienced that same situation that you just described. I know, but so you're far. experiencing <laughs> the exact same risk. What what risk is it, Dave? How much of a risk really is it? How <laughs> so bad? Is it true. And all for an airline mile. And an airline mile, an airline mile. So not not just one X. Not he's just assuming it's an airline mile. Not two percent cash back. Not progress toward a welcome offer. Not putting it on a zero percent APR credit card. Investing the funds, making five percent in a high yield checking account like Laurel Bank. Like Dave, Dave's ideas about credit card and personal finance are just so low. 
it's like don't ever use credit because things might go poorly just use cash and debit on everything just don't worry about it pay everything off full in cash and never take out any money it's like it, it's just so bad it's so bad dave It's almost impossible to use. <laughs> you say airline miles are almost impossible to use, but since 2018, I've been using airline miles and not only an airline mile or airline miles, I've been using points and miles. I've been using flexible currencies. I've been using benefits. I've been using benefits from credit cards to travel, getting free hotel nights, getting free flights. You have things like companion passes. You have things like charge to your card and we're going to give you a refund or a statement credit for that type of travel. So there's a lot more going on than an airline mile. And if you're racking up lots of travel expenses, you're going to accumulate lots of airline miles or lots of points and miles, not an airline mile. It's not like, oh, well, we're going to charge $11,000 to get one cent back. Like nobody's doing that. We're getting a lot more than that. And again, it's not much of a risk if you have an established business, Dave. So I, I think you, if you're going to, you know, <laughs> if you're willing to he's like scratching the back of his head here. He's like, he's stuck. But what are some trips that I've gone on since 2018? I've gone to Hawaii. I've gone to Athens, Greece. I've gone to Rome. I've gone to New Orleans multiple trips to Las Vegas, more Las Vegas trips coming. I'm going on cruises. I've gone on four or five cruises. I just got back from Alaska. I just got back from Lake Tahoe. So it's not an airline mile. It's not that it's impossible to use. Dave, you're just lying here. How is it almost impossible to use? I go to united.com. I log into my account. I see that there are flights available and I book flights. I go to Delta. I go to JetBlue. I can go to Chase and use points through their portal and book flights. It's not almost impossible to use, Dave. It's just false. He has no idea what he's talking about. Risk, uh, I'd be very scared about it. <laughs> he's uh, scared. Is standard. Okay, so you're scared and you think it's a risk. So therefore, everybody should be scared and it's a big risk. Dave, just because years ago when you had properties and then the banks just wanted their money, because things didn't work out for you, Dave, so they're not going to work out for anyone else. In corporate America, somehow corporate America has conned uh, oh, the base. Oh, it's such a big con. It's so terrible that they're going to let us accumulate spend and get points and miles on our credit cards. <laughs> into taking a, a loan on their behalf. A loan on their behalf. So is it, is it really a loan? If we're just getting reimbursed for this travel, maybe 15, 30 days maybe two weeks like what what is it going to be is this a loan oh a loan it's like scary language that he's using here a loan with the promise of repayment yeah mm. um and taking the risk the co-host in the back mm, mm, mm. like preach it dave preach it <laughs> risk for that and, and acting like it's not no big deal but acting like it's no big deal so again how much of a risk is it could, could we get some charts here to say like how many employees who were promised travel reimbursement actually got paid? It, it has to be over 99%, Dave. It has to be like 99.9999%. It it's a real deal. I've noticed it many, many times going sideways on people. Never drink alcohol because maybe you'll develop an alcohol problem. Never engage in bedroom fun because kids might happen. Um, never, like, how, never drive the car because you, you, there might be a drunk driver, you know, or walking outside, you know, you might get hit on the sidewalk. The other thing people do is they run up stuff on their credit card. Oh. Because uh, they're just not watching that's not reimbursable. It they're running up stuff that's not reimbursable. Okay, well, what does that have to do with the initial situation? If your employer says, hey, we're willing to pay for your hotel room and maybe $50 a day in meals, you know what the rules are before getting into that. Or you should ask, not just assume that things are going to be reimbursed and then they're not reimbursed and then you wailed out buying hundreds of dollars in food and drink at a random hotel for overpriced food and drink. Okay, here, here's a message, Dave. Be responsible with your spending. You're, you're telling people this, okay, yeah, be responsible. But then when it comes to credit, it's like nobody can be responsible with credit. You're just gonna lose your mind. You're just gonna go nuts. Well, look, if you can't be responsible, don't play the credit card game.
But to say that nobody can be responsible, oh, you think you're the exception. Why do you think you're the exception? Nobody's the exception. It's just it's just nonsense. They, just be an NPC. Don't don't ever take advantage of rewards programs. Just use cash and debit for everything. It sounds like a great life, you know. Hey, Justin, all those travels you took, uh, you really shouldn't have done that because you you know you're just overspending, Justin. You don't watch. You just run up the charges, Justin. You're so reckless. Oh my God. And so they end up with a reimbursement check that's less than a balance. That's right. Yeah, you could you could spend something on that credit card and think, oh, I'll get reimbursed for this. But Becky down in accounting might not think so. Okay, so ask Becky in accounting before the trip, what are the rules and what is being reimbursed? It's really dumb if you're just going to go in there and rack up charges thinking they're going to be reimbursed, and then you find the bad news that it's not. Find out what the rules are before you get into it. Isn't this something with life? Find out how things work before you get into them. And you know what? If you think it's going to be reimbursed and it's maybe an edge case, then don't wail out. Maybe you could spend $15 on that dinner. And if they say, all right, well, we're not going to give you that 15 It's not breaking the bank. You didn't rack up $200, $300 in expenses going to the spa and buying all this random crap. Okay? You're not, you're not going to be in a bad position. And if you're traveling, it can be okay to spend some money. Because you've opened multiple bank accounts and gotten bank account bonuses. You've opened multiple credit cards and you've gotten cash bonuses. You have extra income. It's okay to spend a little bit as long as you can afford it. Just don't wail out because it's a credit card. This is not difficult, Dave. And so you're on the hook for that. But you got an airline mile. <laughs> and an airline mile. And airline mile. You just got one. Maybe two. Maybe three. Airline mile. Airline mile. She's whispering. When you use a debit card, the strangest thing happens. You pay <laughs> more attention. because When you use a credit card, you can still pay attention. Just like real money. And you could also treat a credit card like a debit card and not overspend just because it's a credit card. You can be mindful. I can talk like, <laughs> talk like this Dave does. I, I don't know. It's like the, di the different cadences here. He's trying to approve of points. I don't know. But yeah, whether it's credit, whether it's cash, whether it's debit, be mindful of what you're spending. If you can't be mindful of what you're spending, don't use credit. But rise above. Find discipline. Be an adult. Be responsible. Can you work on this? Can you improve this? Dave isn't telling you that. I'm saying, okay, hey, it's credit. So, you know, before you use that credit card, make sure you can afford it. The same thing with cash. The same thing with debit. How many people are overdrafting debit bank accounts? I mean, you're, you're just using a debit card. You're not keeping track. You're just letting it run up. It's plastic. Oh, my God, it's plastic. I'm not paying attention. Be a smarter consumer. Please be a smarter consumer. So here's the deal, Kathy. A couple things. Number one, when you use a credit card, you are likely to spend it to spend more <laughs> when you use a debit card. Except I and many, many other people I teach and talk to have seemed to figure out a way not to wail out that we have not only one credit card getting an airline mile, we have like 30, 40 plus credit cards. I got approved for 18 cards so far in 2023, and I haven't wailed out because I have the self-discipline, and hopefully so can you. And again, if you can't, don't play the game, but Dave isn't going to tell you that. Dave isn't going to tell you about the better parts of credit, and wow, this can be really amazing for people who can be responsible. He's just going to say, oh, you're all slavish. You all can't control it. Studies show that people spend more, so therefore don't use credit because some people can't control it. Because some people can't control alcohol. Nobody should drink alcohol. Alcohol is all bad, guys. Period. Mm -hmm. Tons of research showing that. What is the spot on his head over here? There's, it's like a weird camera angle or a blotch here. Uh, anyway. Because it, it doesn't have the same friction uh, marker. The same friction. Let's call it in your brain. A lot more. So your chances of spending more are Okay, so can you rise above the general population who doesn't have much self-control? I don't know. Almost every day I go to a local supermarket and I see people buying total crap that I consider crap with cash and debit. I go to customer service that's supposed to be like 10 items or less. And here's my anecdotal experience, Dave, because you can give yours. People are going up. They're buying all this soda, cigarettes, overpriced stuff, snack foods. And they're using cash. They're still spending. And maybe they can't afford it, but they're still spending it. 
or people using like EBT cards and they're also filling the cart with crap. They just spend, they don't seem to care. Like the, the amount of healthy food I see people buying in grocery stores is so low. People are going up, they're buying lottery tickets with cash. They're going up to lottery machines and putting cash in the machines. So maybe Dave, it's the case that it's not the material that what you're spending with. Maybe it's on the person and the discipline of the person. Ooh, you're, you're going to spend a lot less with cash. Okay. Tell it to all the people that go up to that lottery machine. Tell it to all the people that go up to customer service and buy those lottery tickets. Or how about all those people that just go in the casino and just wail away on slot machines and roulette, even though they can't afford it. Higher where you're doing it on behalf of an employer hoping for reimbursement, your chances of making a mistake are higher. <laughs> your chances of making a mistake are higher. Well, how, how big are those mistakes? Oh, I got, I got a salad and maybe that wasn't reimbursed and the salad was like 10 or $15. Oh, end of the world. Got to declare bankruptcy now. Uh, obviously, you don't think that any of this applies to you, but it does. <laughs> so you, even though Kathy is saying, hey, I'm disciplined. Hey, I'm responsible. Like, I'm not wailing out. I'm just charging what I need to to travel. Well, you might think you're responsible, but I'm here, Dave to tell you that you're not responsible. And I've only really known you for like three minutes and 30 seconds of this clip, but I'm just gonna say you're not responsible, Kathy. Like you, you, might, you might think that you are, but, but I'm just gonna say you're not. This, this is like, is this at all serious? Like how do people take Dave seriously? How is he still popular? Like these 2.79 million subscribers, they're, they're not just kind of like hate watchers like me criticizing these videos. Like people seriously give Dave Ramsey credibility. How are you giving Dave Ramsey any credibility when he's known this caller for like known like for three minutes and 30 seconds of this video and like, well, you might think that you're above the influence, but you're really not. I I'm just going to say that. <laughs> and so you're, you're just more susceptible to risk and to problems. Um, and, and <laughs> you're more susceptible to risk and problems. <laughs> then the third thing is this. And I think the most compelling argument is this. All right, let's hear it. I have never met a single millionaire. <laughs> the Dave Ramsey talking about, I never met a millionaire who got rich with credit. So therefore you shouldn't use credit. You're not going to get rich with credit. So it's not worth it. You know what? I never met a recreational golfer who got rich recreational golfing. So let's close all the golf courses. You know, why bother? You know, I, I, I never met a person who's, like, getting rich through Uber or DoorDash, so you should just never do it. Like, it, it's just such a bad argument. He says it's the most compelling argument. Well, what if we say, hey, I have fun with this credit card hobby. I have fun traveling. I'm making some money doing it. The banks are paying me to use these products. I'm working alongside the banks. I'm making money referring people to cards in some cases. I'm making money using statement credits. I'm going out and I'm getting reimbursed meals through dining credits, like even the small things, even free hotel night certificates every year. I'm having fun doing this. Am I making a little bit of money? Yes. Am I enjoying a hobby? Yes. Am I getting rich just, just from credit? No, I'm not. But I never said I was. Is anyone really out there saying, hey, I'm getting rich because of points and miles? But you know what? For all these millionaires, if you're going to ask them, hey, have you used credit? I bet they have. I bet they've taken loans. And I bet they've used other people's money to make money. The OPM. I bet that they have investors. I bet that they've had some sort of backing. And this is great. They're using credit. So like Elon probably didn't get rich because of a $500 sign-up bonus. But you know what? For people who really value that $500, that could be a big deal, Dave. For people who own reselling businesses and they're using credit and flipping products and even getting something like 2% cash back and they could be doing better. But even that 2% cash back, why would they not do that? Why use a debit and get nothing? Why not use the bank's money to make money? Or even if you're just out there and you're getting maybe two or three credit cards a year and you're getting points and you're able to go on travel that you would have paid for anyway, why not do that? Oh no, you didn't get rich, so don't take that trip to Hawaii. Don't take that trip to Vegas. Oh, don't do that. I made it all on my airline miles. <laughs> <laughs> that was my breakthrough. Yeah, I hope she's laughing at, at Ramsey here. Okay, but what about people that go to events using airline miles and then they find people for networking and that helps them make money? These things happen, Dave. People go on business trips and they make money as a result of the business trips. 
And it's usually not just one thing that makes people rich. And even Dave Ramsey will say that, but all of a sudden now the rules change. You know, Dave isn't just going to say, oh, well, that, that one investment in a Roth IRA, that's not going to make you rich right now, so don't do it. Well, maybe that can be a gradual thing. Maybe credit can be a gradual thing like investing, that over time you're going to get points, miles, cashback, statement credits, and this is going to contribute to a portfolio of income, that these are different ways you're making and saving money. This has been life-changing for me, doing this at a higher level. Even for people I chat with that do it at a low level, they're appreciative of the trips, the food, the rooms, and much more. So why not enjoy a hobby? Why not take advantage of these systems? My financial difference, the difference maker in my financial plan was I took a billion-dollar company that studies consumer behavior in the <laughs> and I was smarter than them. I whipped them. Oh, my God. Okay, so this is how it works. The banks are putting out these big offers. People are paying interest in overspending. But I'm not all people. People I know are not all people. Some people make mistakes, and this is how the banks are making money. So if I can be disciplined, which I don't think is a huge bar, and I've been doing this since 2018, I can be disciplined, I can be organized, I'm not overspending, I can beat it because other people are failing. What is wrong with this? Casinos, especially online casinos, are saying, hey, sign up with us, and we're going to give you some free money for signing up. Do you know what I do? I sign up, I do the minimum I need to get these bonuses, and I stop playing. I don't find this difficult because I have self-control. I know what I'm doing before I get into it. This is how it works. But some people are out there and they just keep playing and they're playing roulette while they're sitting on the toilet and they're losing money. So DraftKings stays in business, even though I make a little bit of money and that's okay. So why not take that easy money, Dave? The people out there listening to you, they're paycheck to paycheck, they don't have much money. You could be teaching them about these things to make a few hundred dollars here or there, and that could be big money to them. But oh no, you can't be above the influence. You can't figure it out. You're stupid. You're arrogant. You're dumb. You think you're the exception. You're not the exception. Don't even try. Don't even try. Just sit at home, work your nine to five, go in the wage cage, you know, make, make money for me so I can get money on my investments. <laughs> Come on, Dave. I didn't spend more and I got airline miles, and I actually used the airline miles. I actually gamed the system, and I became <laughs> a millionaire because of it. Yeah, yeah, no one's really saying that, so I don't know what this straw man is. Um, no one's saying they became a millionaire because of airline miles, so I, I don't see the relevance of this. Never met one, not in 30 years of doing <laughs> it. <that. laughs> but he's never really talked to any people in miles and points, because if he was really serious, he'd have people on the show that said, you know, hey, I've been arguing his credit cards for, for this longest time. So I'd like to invite some people on my show to say about how they win with miles and points. You know, is that, is that ever going to happen? Is Dave really serious about engaging in a discussion? He clearly hasn't looked into miles and points. He clearly does not understand what he's talking about when he's saying you're earning an airline mile. And he's, he's just lying. He's lying, saying that it's almost impossible to use airline miles. You know Dave knows better, but he's just saying this total, total nonsense. Almost impossible to use airline miles. He has zero credibility. Zero credibility. If you're, if you're listening and you're in debt, and you, you think, oh, Dave Ramsey has some good ideas about debt, I would absolutely exit Dave Ramsey. I would absolutely exit him. Look for someone else. What does he really have to offer? If he can't get basic things correct, why should you listen to anything he says? In another response video, he's saying total nonsense also. Like you need to go into debt and make the banks rich to have a high FICO score. He, he says you have to pay interest to have a high score. I've been paying zero interest and I still have high scores. He doesn't understand the basics. He's so bad. He's so out of touch. He's so rude to the callers. Let me take it a step further. I know a lot of middle class broke people who think they're gaming the system. <laughs> And walk up, strutting around, acting like they got. Oh, so some people think that they're winning at casinos when they're not. So therefore, no one's really winning at casinos because the casinos have all the money. So all those people out there winning money at poker, blackjack, card counting. Oh, they're all diluted. They're all white. It's so dumb. It's so bad, Dave. Got something with an airline mile, but 
That gave them an airline mile. They really didn't at the end of the day. Yeah, all those free flights that you took were really not. You know, even though you used those points, you boarded the plane, you took the trip, you were just being gamed. You're just fooled. You're an idiot. <laughs> I'll take it a step further, Dave. I don't like supporting companies oh. that their entire uh, model uh. for having revenue is built on failure. <laughs> Dave Ramsey's model is built on people who are in debt, who have made bad decisions, and those people are giving money to Dave Ramsey to get, to get out of debt. <laughs> I don't like that. I like companies that offer a service. Oh, oh, the the poor. Oh, the banks are so bad. We don't want to take their money. We don't want to work with them because some people make some dumb decisions or end up in bad spots because of medical issues or whatever the case. Oh, the evil banks. We don't we don't want to work with them. They're so bad. You know those grocery stores that make so so capitalism is great until all of a sudden it's the banks and then. All of a sudden, we don't we don't want to work with the banks, and the banks are some evil institutions. Oh, they're making money from failure. Oh no, no. That really would like to help you, and they get revenue from <laughs> giving you something. Yeah, well, how about both? Like, you you can work with these charitable organizations, you can work with these humanitarian organizations, whatever, and you can also work with the banks. And guess what? When you're using a debit card, you're still participating in the system. <laughs> the banks are still making money. So there's no escape from it. Like, what are you going to do? Live out in the woods and just um, have your own cabin and dig up everything and have no internet? And, oh, no, the telecom companies are evil. Oh, don't have a cell phone. The cell phone companies are gouging with their prices. Oh, no. Like, look, you, you can't really escape the system. If you want to escape the system, that's going to be probably a bad kind of life, just living on the, living as the man on the mountain. So we're in it. We're probably not changing it anytime soon. So why not take advantage of the system? Or helping you do something or giving you a service. I, I can't. Yeah, the banks are helping me do something and giving me the service because I'm using their product. They're giving me points and miles. They're giving me benefits. For years now, since 2018 again, I've paid very, very little for travel. I use points to book hotels. I use points to book flights. Usually the most expenses, <laughs> and they're such small compared to the total expenses, are maybe Uber rides that are discounted because of Uber gift cards and Uber credits from credit cards. Um, some food, but that's largely discounted or the most I'm paying is like 15 to $20 for a meal um some taxes and fees very small maybe ten dollars for a flight but even that can be offset by credit card rewards um the bigger picture i'm spending almost nothing for travel i'm raking in the cash back i'm continuing to sell items on ebay thanks to credit i'm engaged in a lot of different side hustles and i'm making money now i'm not getting rich again but if i can keep my expenses low as dave ramsey will tell you in other spaces invest money and be happy with what i have for the most part and get a little bit of nice things spend a little bit oh it's it's not a problem i like my life it's pretty good my expenses are low i don't have too many worries I'm not looking to go out and buy designer clothes and have all these expensive cars it's pretty good am i rich no am i aiming to get rich no but i'm aiming to have a good life and that's fine. I'm having fun with this credit card hobby and making money from it. How many people are making money from their hobbies? Can't support a company where the only way they make money <laughs> is by people failing to pay. The only way they make money. Well, that's false because it's not the only way they make money because people are paying and they're still making money. Like people who get auto loans that Dave Ramsey is also against. Okay, I'm paying like 2 3% on an auto loan, for example. Okay, I'm still paying. I'm not failing to pay. But I engage in this business agreement that I'm happy to pay a small fee in order to have this vehicle up front rather than fronting all the cash. And I'm happy to pay the 2-3% and then invest the money in an interest-bearing savings account or checking account getting 5%. So I'm actually making money thanks to the bank. And this is a very simple thing. I would imagine most listeners can go out there and open a checking and savings account with Laurel Road. November of 2023, I'm getting a, I believe, $300 welcome bonus signing up for the checking account, and I'm transferring money from the checking and putting it in the savings, and I'm transferring money from other accounts and putting it in there too, so I'm making 5% APY in a savings account. So if I can take out loans that are sub 5% and then put that money in there, I'm making money thanks to the banks, and that's just one way to win. Failing to pay on time. That's that's the 
the top seller right there. The they, I don't like the top they, seller. Okay, so is it the only way or is it the top seller? She said it was the only way, and then she's saying it's the top seller. But there are a lot of ways the banks make money, and the only way they make money by interest is a false statement. So more falsehoods on the Dave Ramsey show. Get them in the churn. Is they offer an airline mile and Obama and airline mile again? So is he ever going to like actually give you an example of a high offer credit card? I don't, I don't think he's going to do that. He's just saying an airline mile. So he's just making it seem like you're getting close to nothing when actually you're getting a lot more. Oh, wait, and some report says seventy eight percent of the airline miles are never redeemed. Okay, but are all those airline miles thanks to credit cards, or is it that? random jane down the street who's using cash and debit to every, on everything thanks to dave ramsey flies and gets a marginal return on the cash fare and then doesn't fly again for five years and those miles expire so again dave has no idea about what he is talking about he has zero credibility he hasn't honestly looked into these things that he's talked about he hasn't had people on his show who are experts in this space and he's just talking out of his ass. So yeah. I know Kathy's maybe in the 22%. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> she may get... Okay, so maybe she's in the 22%. But, but earlier it was like, you think you're the exception, but you're not. You think you're responsible, but you're not. 100% reimbursement. And she, she may might. never overspend. But you are playing with snakes, Kathy. Look. Okay, so even if you're responsible, you're playing with snakes. But are you really playing with snakes? If you're going in with a significant amount of protective gear, if you are going in and you are a trained professional and Kathy sounds like she's older, maybe I'm mistaken, but I would think that if you can go 30, 40 years and being a responsible spender, embracing the frugal life, not wailing out, that it's not just going to be one day, oh, I have a credit card, so I'm just going to go to the random nightclub and get bottle service and I'm just going to buy a new brand new vehicle exotic car because i can like i don't think that's happening i have trust in kathy <laughs> i have trust in people who tell me hey justin i'm going to be responsible i'm not going to pay interest and look here's a budget i have and here are my monthly expenses and i don't care for all this pricey stuff i've, I've rejected consumerism and yeah i'm just looking to make money from these credit cards i'm not looking to whale out now, occasionally, some people are going to make mistakes, but the people who are serious about this to have the discipline and control, let's get in the game. Let's make money and save money and travel. Look, everybody says, I pay my card off every month, but all I know yep. is this. There's a trillion dollars in credit card debt. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, some people aren't. Not everybody's saying I paid off every month. Some people, I've gone, to, I've gone into banks that people are coming in and asking about, oh, what are the interest rates on this card? So they're like coming in and they're going to pay a balance. And indeed, some of these interest rates can be very high. Now they might give you like an intro zero APR, but when the people are coming in and asking for interest rates, like they don't have the money and they're just looking to pay their like intro low rate of five, 10%, whatever, allegedly low rate, by the way. Um, yeah. So not just because there's this trillion dollars in debt doesn't mean that everybody is saying I'm going to pay it off every month. More falsehoods on the Dave Ramsey show. So somebody's lying. Yeah. And it's up right now. Dave Ramsey is lying. Yeah. And somebody's you know, lying. And, and, and how are these even like we, we haven't seen this data. I haven't seen it. Dave didn't. You know, we hear this on a lot of Dave Ramsey shows. Maybe I missed something, but I haven't seen this. So, like, where are they taking this debt number from? So, if a statement closes and there's a balance, is that considered debt, even though the person isn't paying interest? I try to maximize. What I do is I let statements close with a balance when I'm not going to apply for things. I'll let the statement close, and it looks like, oh, Justin, you owe $5,000, but I'm not paying any interest on that. And I'm going to pay it back just days before it's due rather than paying it ahead of time because I want to, again, use that money and reinvest it in other places to make more money. I'm trying to max leverage in many cases and use other people's money to make money. This is a good idea if you can just be organized and responsible. And I don't think it's this Herculean effort that Dave Ramsey is making it out to be. And again, if you can't be responsible, don't get in the game. But Dave Ramsey isn't going to tell you the better side of things. And I got to tell you, the number of people that we've coached out of credit card debt over the years that said, it, you know, it all started. Mm -hmm. because I was trying to get a free airline ticket. 
a free line a free line a free airline ticket so it went from a free airline mile to a free airline ticket so what is it dave and, and here's the other one. This one's humorous to me. This is not – Kathy didn't bring this up, but we'll just keep on this subject. All right, let's keep on it. Um, the Discover points, you get you get, <laughs> two, you get two points back. Yeah. So you get 2%, 2%. back. 2%. So here okay. you go. You spend $100 2%. to get – 2%. Ah! $2. Sorry, sorry for that. Was, <laughs> I just had to make fun of her. Now, Big explain whoop. Big whoop. Okay, so co-host, you're planning on going to a grocery store and spending $100 in groceries. And you can either hand over 520s and get nothing back, or you can swipe a credit card and get $2 back. This is a no-brainer. Why would you not get the 2% back? And then you can use that as a statement credit, or you could just deposit it in a checking account. Like, do do what you want, but 2% back, it's found money. It's easy money. So if you're just going to be walking past the register and $2 is going to be on the floor, oh, big whoop, I'm not going to pick up the $2, and you're just going to walk by, you're just going to let that happen, you're spending the money anyway. So why not get something back, even if it's 1%? I don't care. I'll take what I can get. Explain to me how that causes wealth. <laughs> How does it cause wealth? Well, it's extra money, and we could use that money to invest. Even if it's not going to make us rich, you're just saying, oh, that one example, oh, that one, two percent. Yeah, two percent's not going to make you rich. But when you have multiple cards getting multiple benefits, those things are going to add up. And if you're getting an extra two thousand, three thousand dollars a month, that can be significant money for some people. And again, if you're having fun, if this is a hobby and it's extra income, and you could use this to offset travel expenses and go to places that you wouldn't pay for. That's a big victory in my books. Uh. Oh, how, uh, oh, you're paying for Netflix? How is watching Netflix going to cause wealth? We should just dismiss everything because it doesn't make you rich? Like, that, that's what Dave seems to be going on here. Or, okay, well, you're using a debit card from a bank. How is using a debit card causing wealth? How is using cash causing wealth? <laughs> but you, in order to get... To She's she's lifting some weights here behind the counter. Two dollars, you spend a hundred. Yeah. Okay, but if it's money you're spending anyway, and it's a bonus two dollars, why not take it? Now, if you're going to say, well, okay, I was looking at buying these jeans, and here's a pair of jeans for twenty dollars, and here's a pair of jeans for twenty dollars, one hundred twenty dollars. I'm not just going to spend a hundred dollars more just to get two dollars. That's really dumb, and that's what Dave like seriously thinks is going on here. What math class did you people go to? <laughs> what math class did Dave Ramsey go to? Mm, the school of the broke. Yeah. The school of the broke. Oh, I'm so broke here. I'm so broke when I'm paying my balances in full and I've been taking all these travels. I'm so broke. I'm, it's, it's all fraud. I'm telling you, it's that, that's the kind of stuff that's out there. And so what I studied... <laughs> it's, okay, it's money you're spending anyway. So even if I'm only getting 2% back, and I'm paying my auto insurance, I'm paying my electric bill, I'm paying my rent. And yes, you can pay your rent with debit, with credit, and I'm actually getting a rebate on that. Um, you're, you're spending money on gas, you're, you're buying, like whatever you're buying. As long as this is something you're spending anyway, you're not going out of your way to spend extra money, then why not take 2% back? But Dave won't tell you that it's often better than 2%. That many credit cards like the US Bank Altitude Reserve, one of my favorites, you get 4.5% back when you use mobile pay, Samsung pay, Google wallet, Google pay, Apple pay. So if I'm going to a store and I'm buying something anyway, whether I had cash, debit, or credit, then why not take 4.5% back? Some cards are giving you 8x on gas, 6x on gas, 6x on groceries, 4x on groceries, 4x on dining. Like if you have a lot of credit cards, you're going to get category bonuses. And you're also going to get welcome offers on these cards where, okay, spend 4000 in three months and we're going to give you $600, $500, 50000 points, 75000 points. This is very, very, very easy money. Take advantage of very, very easy money. Maybe just a few minutes, two, three minutes to fill out an application, get approved, get the card in the mail, shift your spend to a new card. Like this is a really, really easy strategy to travel and make money. Lead. And the way we came up with the process that we use here is common sense that Grandma had. 
<laughs> yeah, grandma had the common sense. So instead of grandma's common sense, how about we add new information to that because we're living in 2023. Maybe grandma had some good ideas, but now we have all these lucrative reward programs, all these great offers. So let's take advantage of new things and not just live in 1970s Poland where grandma came from. And I studied where companies are being predatory and mm -hmm. I stay away from snakes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so indeed there are some predatory behaviors from some companies, but I don't think we should just exit the system completely just because some companies are predatory. Oh, look at these bad things Verizon did. You shouldn't have any internet, even though it's your only option here. Oh, look at the bad things T-Mobile did. Oh, don't ever do business with them. Oh, Wells Fargo did all these things. Don't ever do business with them. Like we could probably look at any given bank and any big major corporation and see if they did bad things. So are we just going to exit completely just because some bad things were done? Like, good luck with that. Oh, look at look at Dave Ramsey's microphone, and I'm sure there are negative reviews for that microphone. Oh, no, you shouldn't be buying that microphone and doing business with them, Dave. And I studied well. Oh, Dell, Dell over here on the laptop. You know, you know how many people in Miles and Blades have had orders canceled with Dell? Or Dell just uh, taking forever to deliver things or damaged products, defective products. Oh, no, don't ever do business with Dell. Wealthy people. And I find out what wealthy people do. Yep. Okay, wealthy people probably use credit cards. They're probably doing multiple things to make money. And, yes, yeah, some wealthy people, Kathy, do have a credit card. Oh! <laughs> oh! Well, a little bit of honesty from Dave here. And some of them do pay it off every month. Yep. But none of them claim... <laughs> that was somehow a financial breakthrough. That's right. Okay, so what? But they're still making some rewards, and they're probably using those lines of credit to buy things for their businesses to make money. Like, what? How, how is he missing this? How is he missing this very basic thing that it's probably not a great idea to use cash and debit to buy things when we could use credit, get more time to pay, and get some rewards? Even if you're only getting that 2%, that's okay. That's extra money, and that can add up. Even if it's an extra only few thousand dollars a year for these bigger businesses, hey, that's that's some found money. It's easy. That's right. And and you're already spending more mental calories on this. Than <laughs> worth, mental on. calories. And if you're getting full redistribution on this. So. Uh, okay. So if I'm getting an extra three to four thousand dollars a month and I'm just spending maybe a few hours and I'm having fun with that, is that too many mental calories? I don't think so. And even for some people I chat with that get a new card maybe once every three months, maybe two a year, like it's very, very little mental calories when I'm just saying, hey, look, I've looked into this. You can trust me. I know what I'm doing. These are the cards to apply for. This is how to use the benefits. Like it's very easy. I know people who are very casual with this game. I know people who are very advanced. And with the advanced people, we talk and we work through this and we're still having fun and we're looking forward to the upcoming trips. I'm going on a 10-day cruise in December of 2023. And guess how much I'm paying for that? Zero dollars. I wouldn't otherwise go on that cruise, but the cruise is going to be fun. I booked it through the My Vegas apps with a comped cruise. I have a previous video explaining how to take cruises for next to no cost. And the taxes and fees are offset by a, guess what, credit card. So instead of fronting $800,000 in taxes, fees, Wi-Fi, and all that, I'm just going to be using credit card, credit card rewards to offset that. The flight completely booked with miles and points. So this cruise that maybe Jane down the street using cash and debit, thanks to Dave Ramsey, maybe Jane is paying like $1,500, $2,000 for the cruise, maybe a few hundred dollars for the flight, a few hundred dollars for the hotel, maybe $150, $200 for one night if they're just staying one night. Most of these trips, I've stayed multiple nights. And of course, the hotel is covered with points as well. So my vacation that people think, oh, I can only do this once every five years. I can't afford it. I'm going to pay next to nothing. I'm going to have fun. It's going to be fun. I'm not getting rich because I'm taking a cruise, but I like doing it. And I think I've gotten pretty close to financial independence or close to it as I'm still doing things to make money and not only credit cards, but credit cards are a good point, a good part of it now. So you ask why, that's why. You that's spend more, you're more likely on a travel expense account to spend more <laughs> reimbursable. Okay, but we're not spending more for embracing the frugal life that Dave teaches. We're not overspending and not getting reimbursed because we're not overspending to begin with. Because I want to get my airline miles back.
Oh, I'll buy, I'll buy two instead of three. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm, but uh, is anyone seriously doing that? Like, I'm, I'm not, personally, I'm not going into the store and saying, like, well, I should just buy an extra jar of peanut butter because I'm going to get reimbursed uh, 2x. Like, it, it's just not happening. Now, if you're out there and you're doing that, stop doing that. <laughs> but I think my listeners are more mindful than that. Like, I, I have more hope for humanity in a way that people are making f smarter financial decisions that if you're taking the time to be organized to sit down and think like okay these are my monthly expenses i'm very careful i'm investing money i'm getting these credit cards because i want to travel i want to get these bonuses like i don't think these are the same people that oh you're just buying things just to accumulate miles and you don't really need them like i, I really don't think that's the case so dave you know maybe maybe these are the, these smaller amounts of people out there that really aren't being mindful but the problem isn't credit the problem is mindfulness that i know people i've seen in facebook groups it's this group for the mamas that has this facebook page giant pa savers club and there there's a woman in there that said look i bought four jars of mayonnaise because there was a mayonnaise deal that i saved two dollars on mayonnaise and one of the jars expired and there were like a hundred people in the comment section oh call corporate oh go to customer service oh my god what a disaster. The mayonnaise shouldn't have expired. It had a December date and it expired in November. And these people are stressing out about mayonnaise and $2. But I'm using my mental calories to make a lot more when I'm getting 150,000 point sign-up bonuses on an Amex Business Gold card, when I'm getting Hyatt Global status, when I'm getting 60,000 points with Hyatt that's worth more than $800 of travel, way more in many situations. So yes, I can use my mental calories, as Dave says, to get a great return, and I'm still having fun. I think of this as a puzzle, as a game. I'm trying to optimize, I'm trying to min-max, I'm trying to figure things out, and I'm getting to meet new people. I'm getting to see new places. I would not be paying out of pocket to travel as much. I'd maybe travel once or twice a year, or just go on short road trips, but thanks to points and miles, I've transcended that. I'm now the exception. Oh no, it was so difficult. I don't think this is too difficult. A little bit of guidance, a little bit of discipline, a little bit of strategy. More ignoring Dave Ramsey, who's just saying nonsense like it's nearly impossible to redeem airline miles. So once again, Dave has no idea what he's talking about. He's shifting around a lot. He's not really seriously learned about miles and points. And it's just more fail from Dave Ramsey. So if you're still listening and you're a Dave Ramsey fan, Feel free to comment on why you think I'm wrong, but time and time again, with these Dave Ramsey response videos, it's a lot of the same, a lot of the same issues here with Dave. So thanks for listening. Have a great day.